tutorial is in uh, response to a request on showing how to make uh, like a POV through an eye uh, blink and uh, kind of going in and out of focus. So this deals with like animation and keyframing. Um, pretty simple in Premiere. Um, if you want to create, first of all, so this is gonna this is shot here is looking through the eyes of somebody that's supposed to be waking up and looking into the face of somebody here. Um, kind of a typical thing that you might see in a movie or or a video or something. So. Um, you're going to be doing that. What you can do is uh, create, and we want to make it look like eyelids are shutting and opening, and then the and then the eyes start to, the eyes are starting to focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to this little uh, new item icon, click on that, and we're going to create a color mat, and uh, hit OK. It's going to match the sequence settings here that I'm that my playhead is in right now. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm just going to make sure that this is black here. You can choose any color that you want for the mat. I'm going to do black since it's going to be dark when the eyelids shut. Hit OK and just call this like eyelid or something. Um, I only need to create one. We're going to duplicate it for the top and bottom uh, eyelid. But I'm going to drag this and drop it on top of the um, the clip here. Stretch that out for it so it's the same length. And uh, now I'm going to create one of the eyelids here. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a crop on this. I'm going to go to Effects and I'm going to search crop. And uh, there's my crop right there. I'm going to grab it, drop it onto the clip here. I'm going to just crop uh, the bottom one a little bit. because We're, uh, we're going to crop the bottom because we want to feather the edge a little bit of, of one of the crop sides. If you try to feather, it won't feather anything unless you have a crop applied on this whole mat here. So we're going to crop the bottom portion of the, of the eyelid here. Uh, I'm going to do it about halfway up. And I'm going to take the edge and I'm going to feather it off a little bit so it just softens the edge and blurs it makes it look like kind of the bottom or the top of an eyelid right there. So it's kind of softened off a little bit there. Uh, I'm going to zoom this out a little bit so I can kind of see my composition. Let's go to 50% here. Because uh, I'm going to be working with the outside of, of this, um, of the, um, the mat, the color mat. I'm going to select motion here. Uh, and I'm going to, th this is on this eyelid clip here. I've got this selected. And I've gone to effects controls and I've selected the motion. Uh, if it doesn't show this wireframe, you can just click on this little box right there, this little square next to motion, and it will bring up this wireframe. And now you can control the size of your color mat here. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Uh, so make sure that this kind of goes outside the edges and this, and I can control the softness here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, there's our top eyelid right there, and you can see the wireframe outside of our canvas here. Uh, as you as we animate this up, you can see that the eyeballs or the the eyelids are going to open up and close. You can have that be the whole eye if you want to make that bigger, but I'm going to make a bottom and top eyelid. Um, so simply, all you have to do is take this here and duplicate it. Shortcut for duplicating is you're going to hold down Option. Grab the clip while you're holding down Option and drag up. It'll duplicate it up to the timeline above it. So now we have uh, two identical uh, layers here, two eyelids. If I select the top one here and uh, go up and click on the motion square to make a wireframe, you'll notice I've got two different uh, files here, uh, two different uh, color mats now. So all you're going to have to do is go to the motion of one of these clips here. I'm going to choose this bottom one and do it. So this is the top. This will be the top eyelid. That'll be the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to select the bottom. I'm going to arrow down my attributes on motion, and we're going to rotate this 180. Oops, 180 degrees, which will rotate it upside down. Right now it's overlapping the other one, so it's blocking it. So I'm just going to simply grab the position and drag it uh, down the other way. There we go. And you can see uh, my, vert my vertical position there as I bring it down, you're getting kind of that eyelid effect like it's opening and closing. Now you can see the rest of this. We can do this with animation and, uh, and create the effect. So I'm going to take this back up to where it just starts to shut there, right about there. And you can have your, eye eyeball or your eyelids just squeaking open if you want. I mean, from here you can do anything you want as far as what the eyelid's doing. I'm going to take the top one and close it. And now we have the eyelids closed. So I'm going to go back to fit so that it brings that back full screen. And now it is simply animation from here. Uh, very simple. So you're going to select the top eyelid and we're going to add a keyframe. At the beginning, turn on the keyframe on positioning, on position, play into it about right there. So the first eyelid opening is going to be a little bit kind of slow. So we're going to uh, 
add a new keyframe right there. From here to here, the eyelid's going to open. So I'm going to arrow back to the beginning. This would be pretty easy. And if you did this in After Effects, you could pretty much duplicate the, the top one, put it in a new comp, and animate. And, and the animation would be duplicated on both of these. One would just be flipped. It'd be a lot easier in, in, in After Effects, but that's a whole new tutorial. Um, but in Premiere, you kind of have to do each one manually. There's some tricks to do it, but it's going to be as much work as just doing all this manually. Anyway, that I just really said nothing. Here we go. So I'm going to, uh, I've got my first keyframe set at this position. My second keyframe is set at the exact position, but I'm going to change the second keyframe uh, and animate this slightly open right there. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to land, I've landed on this keyframe. I want these things to be in sync. So I'm going to click on the bottom keyframe or bottom uh, uh, layer, turn on my uh, keyframes for position and as that keyframe. And then I'm going to go to the beginning and add a new keyframe. So these keyframes are exactly the same as the keyframes in my top eyelid. But with the bottom one, I'm going to go to the second one and animate it downwards right to there. So now if we go to the beginning and play, you'll notice the eyelid opens up, but it suddenly stops. It's very mechanical. It suddenly stops. So what I'm going to do is go to each one of these second keyframes here, right click on it, and I'm going to go to uh, Temporal inter uh, Interpolation. I'm going to tell it to ease into this keyframe. It won't suddenly stop. It'll ease into it. And if you select the motion on this, you'll actually see um, the keyframes individually here. It's going dot, 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 dot. And then this little thing down here, if you grab that, that is your Bezier ease in, ease out sort of uh, um, line there. And if you notice, if I pull this further out, you notice all these little teeny dots, they get closer and closer together, which means it is slowing down and coming to a stop. This is going on a curve now, so I'm just pulling this out so you can see what that's doing. The further they are apart, the faster it's going, the closer they are together, the, the slower it's going. So let me undo all that there. Um, just so you know how that works. This ease in is automatic. It, it kind of eases in there. It'll have these dots closer together and ease in. Um, let's take a look at that on the bottom eyelid. Watch the bottom eyelid. Now it doesn't seem as mechanical. You can slow that down even more by stretching this Bezier curve up, drag it straight up, and then it will gradually come to a stop there. Gradually comes to a stop. The top one, uh, not so much, uh, because we don't. It's, it's still more mechanical. So we've only done this to the bottom one. Um, there we go. Nice little ease in there. Um, I'm going to do the same to the top keyframe here. Right click on this keyframe on the top. Go to te uh, temporal interpolation and tell it to ease in. So let's watch that now. Now it doesn't seem so mechanical. It doesn't suddenly stop, but it gradually comes to a stop. Uh, so it looks a little bit more natural. All right, so now I'm going to basically, I'm uh, going to show you a quick little trick here as well. Uh, on the top one here, I'm going to animate that. At one point, it's going to just blink. Let's make a blink really quick. So I'm going to add a keyframe to where it's going to start the blink. And actually, I'm going to go like five frames down and put another keyframe. So I'm going to do hold down shift and arrow to the right. That jumped five frames ahead. Shift, arrow, left or right, jumps five frames. So I'm going to hit a keyframe there. These are so close together, it's kind of hard to see them. So you can just zoom up on them like this. And I'm going to hit Shift 5 and add another keyframe. So it's five frames, five frames. So I'm going to close and open back up here. So I'm going to jump between these keyframes. Go to the uh, Actually, we're going to go to the middle one here and close this. So close the eyelid right there. We're going to do the same to the bottom here. And there's a quicker blink. If you don't like the speed of this, you can grab these two keyframes, stretch them out a little bit, grab this key keyframe, stretch it out. So this happens over a little more time, slowing it down. Uh, I'm going to land on the exact keyframes and add the exact same thing here. Boom, on the bottom, go to the middle, go to the bottom, add a keyframe. So, this, so these are in sync, basically. There you go. We've got the exact same keyframes here, but now we just have to program them. Go to the middle keyframe on the bottom and close this eyelid. There we go. So now we've got a blink that happens on the exact same thing. And actually, I'm going to make my eyelids kind of disappear on this last one here. So I'm going to go to the last keyframe and move that so it's just barely off. So I have a little bit of softness on the edge. So now the eyes are all the way open. There we go. So there's a blink, boom, and there we go. And that looks pretty good.
So now we're just going to keyframe a blur. So when the eyes open up, they're trying to focus. The eye barely opens up and a blink. And you can do more of those if you want, maybe a couple blinks. And if you want a couple blinks, this is kind of cool. I'm just going to go to these three keyframes, copy. I'm going to highlight all those. I'm on the top right now. I'm going to highlight all three of those keyframes, copy. Uh, let's go to the last keyframe here. I'm going to go shift, down five, down five. So I've moved down 10 frames and paste. Then I'm going to go to the bottom one, copy these keyframes, copy and paste. And now I've got two blinks. So now I don't have to do all those keyframes again because I just copied and pasted keyframes. Blink, blink. There we go. So we've got two blinks there. Now let's keyframe our blur. I'm going to go to the blur, find a blur, grab Gaussian blur, drop it on the bottom clip here because this is going to go, this image is going to go in and out of focus. We're going to start at the beginning and make it, uh, turn on our keyframes at the beginning, make it way out of focus. Let's go to like 300. Actually, 250 is good. I'm going to play. So right now it's out of focus, and we're going to have it gradually come in focus as the eyes open up. Maybe not quite all the way, so I'm going to pull this down. It adds a keyframe, get it where I want it, like maybe right there. Still out of focus, and maybe come sharp into focus right there. Maybe almost not quite all the way sharp. And then blink. And on the blink, let's have it go way out of focus again and in focus a little bit more and after the last blink it's going to come into sharp focus so way out of focus right there notice it's adding these keyframes way out of focus and comes into sharp focus on the last blink so let's play this watch it Maybe a little bit slower on that last keyframe there. So just grab that and drag it out. And into focus. There we go. And that's our little eye blink there. Okay. And actually, here's a quick little bonus. If you want to watch this, you can. If not, this is just extra stuff. Uh, just to make this kind of finalize the shot, I always like to finalize things up and make them look fancy. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some, a little bit of a... Uh, I'm not going to really do color correction on but we're going to do some looks to this and just make it look fancy. I'm going to go into the cinematic... Uh, Lumetri looks here. Grab that, grab it, to, and drop it to the bottom. I'm going to turn off these eyelids for a second here and do some uh, some effects on this. I'm going to turn off the Gaussian blur just for a sec so I can do some uh, some masking. But once you add the cinematic look here, uh, cinematic one Lumetri look, it adds kind of this cool heavy contrast look. Uh, there's without, there's with. But the face is way too dark. Uh, so the way you can fix that, because the, the background is lighter than this face here, so we want to kind of bring out the highlights in the face without darkening the background. I'm going to go to the Fast Color Corrector. I'm going to grab that and make this happen before the Lumetri hits. I'm going to do a little mask on the face and not the rest of it. Because if you brighten the whole thing, it's going to really blow out the background now. On this Fast Color Corrector, see if I brighten up the face just enough, this background is way too bright. So what I'm going to do is get the face just the right exposure here, right about there. I like that look on the face. And with the new 2014 updates, you can do this create ellipse mask on pretty much any effect that you have in Premiere. Uh, so I'm going to hit create ellipse mask, and you'll notice it created this little ellipse for me here. Uh, notice now the background is darker and the face is brighter. But now you can shape this to match the face here. About right there. Um, and we can feather that edge a little bit, uh, feather that so it softens it off and kind of blends it in with the background there. There we go. Now look at this with and without. There's without, there's with. Now the I'm not correcting. Keep in mind the color corrector, fast color corrector comes before the Lumetri. If you do that afterwards, it's going to be kind of a destroyed image, a flat destroyed image, because it's correcting what the Lumetri has already done, the darkening that the Lumetri has done. That's like trying to fix a horribly underexposed shot, which this isn't. So I'm going to do the brighten it before the Lumetri occurs, the Lumetri effect occurs. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more contract, contrast to that clip uh, just because that kind of destroyed it a little, or it made it too flat actually. Uh, so there we go. So the fast color corrector happens first. Let me show you. There's the fast color correction brightening up the face. There's the Lumetri. And without that, without the fast color corrector, it's going to be too dark. But now um, her face moves a little bit, so I'm going to track the face, get it to the very beginning, select my mask there so I can see where it's at, position it over the face, and uh, simply just 
press play right here, the track, uh, track selected mask forward, it will track the face. Notice it's keeping this attached to her face. So her face will stay bright and you just won't see this obvious circle vignette just placed it over the entire clip. So once that's done, uh, I'll come back and show you the, the result with the eyelids turned on and everything. But now we've got a cool looking uh, shot as opposed to just a normal video looking shot. So I'll come back and show you this. Okay, now that that's done, as you play through it, you'll notice the mask tracks to her face and it keeps her face uh, kind of highlighted so it's not so dark. Uh, so now I'm going to go back and turn on my Gaussian blur again so it goes in and out of focus. There we go. And I'm also going to, oh, by the way, on the, if, if you see these edges kind of sinking in on the, on the Gaussian blur, you can actually just go in and check mark. I'll repeat edge pixels. I don't repeat these edge pixel, pixels that kind of blur into the image. And you can't really tell when it goes blurry that, uh, you, that you have that edge anymore. Um, so I'm going to now turn on my eyeballs, or my, my eyelids. And there we go. So now we got the blink. We've got the color correction. And there you go. Uh, so now I will export that out and, uh, and I will play it back at the end of this clip. So thank you for watching.